Hey guys, cooking, cutting up, keeping it real on location at the Carriage House Tea Room slash Brightside Gallery. Brightside Gallery. Susan's going to show us around and I'm going to flip the camera. Mm -hmm. So you guys, and I'm going to try to go slow. I tend to get excited and then I buzz oh, yeah, around. So but um, how oh. lovely. Let me back up. Uh -huh. Wendy was checking out the actual tea area. Now, I call her Lady Mary. That's the way she is in my phone. Her I love that. Mary Merkin. I love she it. said Lady Mary is her persona. Y'all will see why. <laughs> and so, uh, this is where she blends all these different teas. She blends by hand, which is very unusual. Wow. And then she comes up with the different types of tea. She's got, like, teas for sleeping better, for arthritis. I get that from my mom. The sleeping better works. I've had it. It's okay. his hyssop tea. Right. Mm -hmm. It helps. And then she has like teapots. These are all of her blends. I love that. So much more about that. And then this is the tea side. And so then, if we turn. Oh, I love this chair right here. You know, oh my you know, goodness you know, gracious! <laughs> all right, we're gonna go in this room. Now. Yeah. You'll see that she also has art and crafts and things that are handmade by people in Randolph. Oh, I love that painting with the purple flowers. Isn't that so pretty? What do y'all think, guys? Hey, Gigi Stewart Pearson. We're touring the tea house, carriage house, tea house, and bright side gallery in downtown Ashburn, North Carolina. And Susan Dosier from Heart of North Carolina, Heart of North Carolina Visitors Bureau is helping us by showing us around. Yeah. I love it. As you walk Wow. You'll see some of our pottery from the area. Nice. Love it. What a great way to shop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my and goodness. And everything here benefits somebody locally. Mm-hmm. So it's all local artisans. Mm -hmm. Winifred, look at that. Mm -hmm. that's beautiful? Oh, my Lord, that's beautiful. Oh, I love that. Oh, look at the kids' stuff, y'all. Okay. Yeah, look at the copper jewelry, y'all. Mm -hmm. Did y'all know that that's supposed to help something about arthritis in your hand if you wear a copper bracelet? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, very fun. Makes me sound smart to say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love it. Did you get your jewelry habit? Love. Right love the jewelry now. This reminds me of Graham Art Center in uh, nearby our house. Oh my gosh, y'all, did you see this china? How interesting is that? It's very beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? Doesn't it remind you like of grandma? Like, oh, that is so pretty. Here, hold on. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's the Wisteria collection. That's beautiful. That is, that is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. Okay, Miss Susan, I, I get, I, I get no, sidetracked. I'm a squirrel, I'm a squirrel. <laughs> I see a squirrel. I love it. I love it. Looks like some crochet items. Pocketbooks, too. And then we're going to walk. This is so interesting. Was this an old house? Yes, it was an old house. And for those of you who... Look at that furniture. ...love stories, um, many have reported that the upstairs is a little haunted. But by I experience. love that. By friendly spirit? Yes, definitely friendly spirit. Now, y'all know, for hashtag cutting up crew, that I believe in the Holy Spirit. So, I ain't down for no ghost spirit. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, look at this, y'all. Let me, let me zero in on that so they can snap that. A little history. That, that's, that, that abstract that is wonderful. That's by Corey Cagle. How? Cagle's one of our pottery names. Oh, we saw that yesterday, okay. a sign, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love these. This is Love it. People land and enjoy Mary's. Mary, tea. this is a, a, a this is a great place to work. Oh, it is. oh my goodness! And how long did you tell me you've been here? Eleven years. Wow! There's Ronald Reagan. Was he here, or is that just a picture? That's a picture with Nick Lucas. That's the man on the end of the sunglasses. Yeah. And Nick Lucas is one of our musical inspirations around here. Gotcha. His music is another big part of what we do here. How? Not tell me about that. Um, 
for four years now, I've been the manager of a musical duo. Okay. That's Original Formula. Awesome. So this is their headquarters. So they are, who is extremely inspired by Nick Lucas. Nick Lucas was a singing, guitar playing crooner from the 1920s through the 1980s. Nice. He was born in the late 1800s and he died in the 1980s. And he performed all the way up until the time he passed away. Wow. It's Carriage House, guys. People are asking, what is this? Carriage, Carriage House. House tea. Carriage House tea. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have some tea? We're going to have some tea. So the tea I've made for you today is papaya strawberry Yum. green tea. I have sweetened it slightly and chilled it. Nice. This is what you're going to have with these stuff. How nice, Mary. Thank you. And you blend your own tea. And people buy it from all over the country, is what Thank Susan you. said. So the biggest end of my business. Oh, thanks. Certainly, there's the the foot traffic just. In mm hmm. The shop, mm hmm. But a wholesale end of my business. Oh my lord, this is good. Namaste. Namaste. I'm gonna stay right here. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm hmm. Oh, I love that. You taste each one. Girl, go. What I've got for you, and I'm going to give this to you, is oh. a tin of our papaya strawberry green tea. Yum. But I did want you to see, this is what the product looks like. And it green is, tea is healthy. Oh, it's very healthy. Yes. Love it. Winifred, what you think? You I all? I love it. I love green tea. Mm-hmm. Me too. I'm going to ask for what? My viewers are giving you hearts. I love hearts. <laughs> We have 86 on with us now. Wonderful, thank you. And I love that that artwork of that uh, peacock. Isn't that beautiful? We have some wild peacock, peacocks near our farm. And my husband said, don't ever bring one home because they'll stay and they'll be all over the place. You know, all over the farm. And have you ever heard of peacock bark? No. They are loud. They are like oh, yes, I have. I thought you were telling me something. I got you to. How cute is that? How sweet. Thank you so much. But that is this, what we're drinking. So. The other tea I love, because I have trouble, my, my viewers know I have trouble sleeping because I'll be online at, at night, mm -hmm. is hyssop. Someone told me that on the vlog to get hyssop tea and drink it at night before bedtime, and it does help you relax to fall asleep. Okay. What can you tell me about it? Well, I'm going to, I don't know a lot about this. Stuff. I'm just going to guess that's an herb. I, I know. So I don't know. I'm going to guess that's an herb, which would probably be a very, very mild natural sedative. Mm -hmm. uh, in a similar regard, a lot of people use chamomile. Or yes. You want to say the word. And you have some of that. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and when people go to the grocery store, and if you're just buying grocery store brand, there's. Um, a sleepy tiny tea. Mm -hmm. I bought that before. That's chamomile. Mm -hmm. That is what's helping you with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of the herbals that are natural sedatives. So I'm going to guess that's what the hyssop is. And if anyone has questions that's following along, shoot them out. Um, write them down and we'll, we'll ask Miss Mary. We'll have fun with them. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what I want to talk to you about. A few different ways of making tea. Okay. How familiar are you with making loose leaf tea? None. This is my first lesson. So then that in that tin is loose leaf tea. So this is going to come in handy. And oh, then yeah. we're going to help you have the right equipment to do that. Absolutely. So what I have here just for doing, I've got a little bowl of loose leaf tea. Now this just happens to be English breakfast black tea. Mm -hmm. So if a person wanted to make a cup of tea, now this what I'm holding is a pyramid tea bag. I do handcraft these, meaning I put the tea in the bag and I seal the bag. I've got a heat sealer. So I will handcraft these. I make them to serve on my tea bar because I also have a tea bar here where I make and, you know, sell. And people can come in, anybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is how they're getting their tea is in a pyramid tea bag. That is not how I standardly sell them. Standardly, it's going to be in that tin of tea as loose tea. But I can do it this way. So if someone wants to, I will sell them tea made this way. Mm -hmm. Of course, the very ordinary way, of course, is putting your tea bag in your cup, pouring your boiling water in, and steeping it. Of course, taking that out. How long do you keep it in? That is going to vary by personal preferences. Okay. So we always say three to seven minutes. 
three minutes if you like it really wimpy, seven minutes if you like it really bold, or if like Goldilocks, you want it just right. I love that. Somewhere in between, four to five minutes. Gotcha. So, again, completely personal preference. Nice. Now this one I'm holding is a tea infuser. This is what tea people know they need if they're going to be working with loose leaf tea. Mm -hmm. Which I think you get more flavor from. You don't get the bag taste, the taste Correct. of the bag. So my, what, my viewers are saying, this is so interesting. Why, thank you. So what we've done is I've opened up this little infuser. What you then is take your teaspoon of tea, you put it in there, then you just close it and lock it. Now from this point forward, I teach people, you treat this like a tea bag. You've just created a reusable tea bag. Right. That goes in your teacup. The boiling water goes in. Again, steep it your three to seven minutes or somewhere in between. You take it out and there's your cup of tea. How nice. Now, then what a person would have to do, and of course this tea in here, I'm, I'm just telling you, would be all wet and all soaked and mm -hmm. full. But all you would do at that point is open it up and then empty it out. Now, I'd be shaking it into my garbage disposal. Right. Sure. Then you rinse this out and then you set it over to dry. So basically, if you want to talk about people going green, this is a reusable tea bag that you just nice. use over and over. And if you treat it right, treat it well, you'll have it forever. Nice. It's just made of stainless steel, just mesh and chain. And that will last you a good while if you, if you take care of it. Sure, it will. We like waste, not want not on my page. Correct. Mm -hmm. I agree. So that is how we would do a cup of tea. That's the infuser. Can I ask a question? You yeah. And when you're steeping your tea in your cup, do you cover it? I, I see some people cover that. I don't. But I do sell here little cup covers. And what that is doing is, is mostly keeping the heat in. Okay. Just oh, gotcha. Heat. Right. So okay. it's not going to make the steeping better. Okay. It's not going to make it bolder. not going to make it quicker. It just keeps the water okay. hot longer. Okay. Nice. And they're just darn cute because I've got all novelty kinds with cute little, it, you know, mm -hmm. the thing that's the handle that you lift it uh -huh. off or all kinds of different little figures. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about making a pot of tea. So this kind of a pot that I have here comes with the little basket tea infusion. Okay. okay. So here's a good lesson. For anyone who needs to know this, if you're going to be making loose leaf tea, it is always one teaspoon of tea, of this loose leaf tea, to one cup of water. Got it. So when we were working with this, if you remember, I said we put one mm -hmm. teaspoon of tea in here for our one cup of tea. Uh -huh. So that is one to one. Real easy to remember. This little teapot here holds four cups of water. Okay. So we're going to know we're going to be putting four teaspoons of tea in here. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly what we would do. It tastes so fresh, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So we would be putting, that's that's another part of my lecture I'm gonna to get to. Mm -hmm. We would be putting in our four teaspoons of tea. And now at this point, we've got our four teaspoons of tea in there. We would then pour our boiling water in there and fill it up to the tip top in here. And you close your lid and you let that steep. Again, personal preference three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, just depending on how bold you want that. Now, what would go on is you would take this out when it's all done, and there's your... Nice. nice. Yes. Very nice. And how dainty. I love this. It's real handy. Now, mm -hmm. let me tell you another thing. This is nifty, nifty, nifty. There might be some of us who are of the age that we remember sun tea. Do you remember people Yes. sun tea? Now, what I want to share with you and we've learned a lot since the days when we were teenagers. Mm -hmm. We thought that was good and yummy and cool, and it is. And there might not be great dangers, but there's some danger that when you would do that and put that tea in there and put it outside in the sun and you'd leave it out there all day, 10 hours, 15 hours, 14 hours, there's a chance bacteria could start to grow in that. Really? Because tea, which this is, is a botanical mm -hmm. thing. It had been alive. Bacteria likes that. It sure does. It likes anything. Like anything that. alive. So that what was being done, that was in a way of doing a real neat, simple way of just throwing the tea in, putting it out in the heat and letting right. it steep it. But there is another way, very easy way and a very safe way to do quite the same thing, but even in my opinion, yummier. So let's talk about this. 
We've got our teapot. Mm -hmm. Let's have put this in. Let's put our four teaspoons of tea in because that's how much water we hold. Then you just go to your sink. You fill it up with four cups of tap water just up to the top. Close that lid. You put it in your fridge. Ah. This is called cold brewing. You leave it in there minimum of eight hours overnight if you're really patient. And the next morning you come here, you take this out, and you have got your pot of tea. Nice. It is delicious. It is fantastic. And what I do like about it is extremely smooth. I don't know a better word to share with you. And when you're drinking this tea, what you're having, do you taste the smoothness? Yes. Mm -hmm. And no aftertaste. Correct. I don't know a better way to describe what I'm talking about. This is so smooth and mm -hmm. what's so smooth, especially what, what this is black tea and I know we're drinking green tea. Black tea can be very, very bold. It can also possibly be bitter if you steep it too long, too hot. Different combinations of things can make it bitter. Well, doing the cold brewing, I have never, never, never in my lifetime of cold brewing come up with a bitter pot of tea. In the fridge. Mm -hmm. In the fridge. And if y'all want to know why, this is part of my lecture. In <laughs> tea, in all tea of the green tea and the black tea, naturally, these tea leaves have tannins. Tannins are an acid. If you've heard of tannic acid. In wine. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the tannins are what can cause the bitterness. And really? if you have shocked it with too hot of a water or let it steep too long, it's drying lots more of those tannins out. So those tannins are what's causing the bitter. When you have put your tea in here, put the cold water in here, put it in your fridge, not one bit of hot water has hit it. Not one little tannin has been shocked out of those leaves. That's what we call it when you're drying that, those tannins out, it's shocking. You, you say you have shocked the leaves and you've brought out the tannins. That's why it's not going to be bitter because those leaves have not been shocked. They've been soaked and that's what we want. We want the flavor, we want the delicious oils out of the leaves, but that's what's going to give us our flavor. So if you can be patient, if you can do that, the Sounds good. Doesn't it, nice. though? And it's so darn easy. Here's another thing. A person doesn't need a fancy, dancy, cool little pot like this with all of that. If you want to do cold brewing, let's say you've got a bell or ball, the ball uh -huh. jars. Mason jar. So mason jar with the good lid. Let's mm -hmm. say it holds four cups of water. You put in your four teaspoons of tea leaves. You put in your four cups of water. You put on that lid. Give it a little swoosh around. Put it in your fridge. You leave it, again, eight hours overnight. Next nice. Week, you take that off. You're going to have to strain it through a strainer. Mm -hmm. That's so but you mm -hmm. have got four cups of cold brewed tea and something as simple as a mason jar. How nice. That's awesome. Yeah. This is cool and it's fun and we have it on. But it's you not always necessary. Right. Correct. I love that. So a mason jar will do it. Now, here's another thing. Old tiny times used to be... These kinds of pots didn't used to exist. Mm -hmm. So we've got a whole world full of people with teapots that don't have these built-in little things like that. And people say, well, what am I going to do? Right. Here's what we're going to do. Again, if this is, holds four cups of water, you throw your four teaspoons of tea in there. I call it naked. You just throw them in there <laughs> naked like that. We're not having anything that they're going in, nothing covering them, nothing. You just throw them in there. Put your, whether you're doing it hot or cold, Put your four cups of water in there. Now, if you're doing it hot, you just sit there and let it steep because you're doing it hot. Same thing if you're doing it cold, put it in the fridge. And then the very next day, if you wanted to pour some tea out because, oh my goodness, yes, you could strain it all at one time. Or what people do is they have a little screen, and I sell these. Like here. a sieve. Mm -hmm, but it's just a little screen for you, a little sieve. And you just pour through that. And so some tea leaves are going to be coming out but they'll be sitting right on top of that little strainer. Mary, that's what we could do with our Seagrove pottery teapots. Yes. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. they're not going to come with all this. Mm -hmm. But the old timey way used to not even be involved with this. There didn't also used to be these. So this is how it was done. Just in the pot, throw the tea leaves in there. Like I said, call it naked. I got a question See? for you. If people want to know how to, well, this is for me. Could, could you put your tea leaves in a mesh cloth 
tie it with a piece of burlap and toss it in? There's absolutely a yes to that, but I want to tell you to be careful to that. Okay. So the yes to that is, oh, well, heck yeah. I even sell here little bitty drawstring gauze bags. Nice. So if a person, let's say, especially if they're traveling, and they might not have all the places to rinse this and da 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 if they took these little gauze bags and they put their little bit of tea in there and created that, it's a to-go tea. Well, then when you're done, you can throw it away. Mm -hmm. Okay, be done with it. Mm -hmm. But getting back to what you're talking about for a pot and put something in gauze, mm -hmm. a very careful thing, this is the thing to be careful of, is do not make that a tight bundle around the tea and think, da-da-da. I mean, uh -huh. it's tight and tidy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We want it loose. We want it open. And if you saw, when I put that one teaspoon of tea leaves in here, it only filled up the half about, you know, this bottom side. Mm -hmm. By the time this has soaked and swelled, that oh. entire thing yes. is full. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to want to let, what if you're doing a gauze bag, let there be room for it to soak and swell. Because you'll get no flavor if it has not soaked and has not swelled. And that is how you are drawing, again, the flavor, the oils out. I had a little lady come to me, and she bought everything and all the parts and pieces of making tea and taking it home and doing this. And she came back a couple weeks later and she said, I really love all this what I'm doing, but I'm just not getting much flavor out of my tea. And I let it steep and I've even let it steep like 10 minutes and 12 minutes and I'm not getting much flavor. So I said to her, would you go through and act out exactly what you're right. doing with me? Show that me what you're doing. doing, yeah. Okay, so as the little story started to unfold, she described how she would open her little infuser and then she would stuff as much tea in this side as she could and stuff as much tea in this oh, side Lord. as she could. Oh, Lord. And it shot because she likes her tea very, very, very full. She likes it strong. So she knew the more tea she put in, the stronger and bolder it would get. And then she put it in her cup, pour that water, give it 10, 15 minutes and then try it, and it would be very wimpy, just very wimpy. I just stopped her right there in her tracks, and I said, that's the problem. You have stuffed this so full. It cannot soak, it cannot swell. And I asked her, I said, have you ever then, when you open it up, I said, is it almost dry in the middle? And she's like, uh-huh. I said, that's because it, no water could Can't get to it. You got it's got to duffy. It's got to soak, it's got to mm -hmm. swell, it's got to have room. And so all of that is why we go one teaspoon to one cup of water. I told her that before she left, but she went home and thought she was going to kind of like bold it up beef and it up. beef it up. And it's like, mm -mm. you've <laughs> just actually taken two steps back. You didn't take your two steps forward. You didn't accomplish. So again, when you're working with something like this or those little gauze bags, or even if you're making your own little kind of a infusing pouch that you would not using that, drop down in here. And leave some room in it. It's got to be, I'm just going to call it baggy. I got gotcha. you. Question, I love to make um, hot tea with uh, mint that I grow. Would you put your mint in with the tea to Absolutely. diffuse it? Okay. So let's say we are doing this. Okay. Now this just happens to be English breakfast tea, which is just good black tea. Mm -hmm. You would just throw your couple of mint leaves right in there, mm -hmm. get this all full up. Mm -hmm. And let it steep. Mm -hmm. oh, it smells so good. You're just going to have a ball. Another thing people can do if they wanted to do something similar to that, if they didn't have mint leaves, is just throw a peppermint in. Yes. Because it's going to dissolve. And it's going to dissolve. And it'll down. sweeten it, too. That's yes. a great idea. Well, have you ever had a cup of hot cocoa stirred with a candy cane? Yes, yeah, same nice. thing. Nice. Yep. Right. <laughs> it's wonderful. Let me tell you another. Robin story. says she has learned so much, and thank oh, you. Well, thank you, Robin. I'm going to tell you another fun, fun thing. This is the, I, I like to do, draw my little box. We like to think outside the box when it comes to tea because there's just so much fun, 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 fun you can do with it. Certain teas, and there are many teas, are delicious with, yes, some people put some creamer in, but I'm going to tell you what I do that ramps it up a little bit. Oh, let's hear it. Is I put whipped cream. Yeah. Girl, stop. You know the ready whip can with a pan? Yes, girl. So I'm going to tell you how I do that. Yes, girl. Major pot of hot tea over here. 
I would go and fill this up with the ready wick. Fill it all the way up? Well, as much as you want. Like a barista. Yeah. And then you pour your hot tea over that. And then you have a dessert. Well, sure. But reason being is it will start to stir it and combine it. It will also start to kind of um, dissolve it and squish it. Yum. So that when you go like this, it doesn't all end up up here. Because what I used to do is I used to put tea in the cup and then go on top. And that looked real pretty. Mm -hmm. But everybody who went like mm -hmm. this didn't know where it was. Yeah. That was fun for me to watch. But it wasn't, right, right, right. It wasn't what we were trying to do. Right. Yeah. So now it's like, oh my goodness, this uncomplicates the whole thing. You put your ready whip in here first, pour your tea over it. It begins to cream it, begins to sweeten it, thicken it. And of course, we all say whipped cream makes everything a party. Yes. So then you have a party in your tea cup. Now, am I correct? Most teacups are only six ounces. That is correct. Okay. However, not eight ounces. Okay. It, uh, such a large piece of our population has mugs. Yes. You know? I have the actual six ounce. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so, most of our measurements of these teacups are six ounce. But I'm going to say such a large portion of people just want to make their tea in their mug. So, do eight ounce. Yeah. Or their pottery mug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Okay. So, that, that's not going to throw off our, our measurements or our okay. application. Just want to make sure about that. <laughs> you know, Mary, um, talking about putting herbs in, I think it's so interesting, and my viewers love this part of the page where we talk about how they used to do stuff, mm -hmm. right? This has stood the test of time. It has. Mm -hmm. As a beverage, mm -hmm. tea is over 6,000 years old, mm -hmm. and it is second the second most popular beverage in the world, second only to water. Now, here in America, a lot of people are going, uh-uh, <laughs> coffee, and here's the thing. And this is what I tell people, because I go around and I do tea lectures. Think of the globe. This is our world. Here's the USA. Here's the rest of mm -hmm, the globe. Mm -hmm. The rest of the globe is drinking tea. Here in USA, <laughs> it's mostly coffee as the number one. But we can't think the world revolves around us. Mm -hmm. So that is why it's true, true, true statistic to say tea is the second most popular beverage in the world. Well, second there's so many people world. that do that. And now, have you ever come to Greensboro to um, the hotel where they do teas? Yes. 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 And they wear hats and everything. Oh, it's marvelous. Wendy, we got to do that one time. I'd love to. It is a real tea. Can we come back here for our tea party with our hats on? You can. Girl, <laughs> stop. I do a lot of tea parties. You oh, do? How I, cool. I throw them. It's privately booked. So if someone sure. comes to me and they want to privately book a party, another thing that I explain to them, I'm not restaurant great, so I'm not preparing the food. I can't do the catering. Right but I can do the tea. Mm -hmm. So if they bring in their own food or bring in their own caterer, then I'll do all the tea. What a great, yeah. We, we need to do that for Sarah's baby shower. We just had a baby shower. Somebody to ask if there was decaf option. Oh, that's another part of my lecture. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's, I don't sell any decaf, and here's the why. I sell black teas and green teas and white teas. Those all have caffeine in them. I have an enormous section of herbal teas. That is herbal, herb and fruit, and then rooibos. That's a whole other piece of the lecture I'll talk about is rooibos. But what I'm getting to is all of the herbal teas are zero caffeine. Zero. Okay, the so reason, straight herbal. Correct. The reason I will not sell decaf, it's mostly a misnomer. I don't know if you all know, but decaf does not mean no calf. When I was a little kid and I'd be in a restaurant and people would, you know, mm -hmm. come up to my folks and say, you want calf or decaf? I think calf means it's got caffeination in it, and decaf means it doesn't, and that's wrong. It just means lower caffeine. Oh, really? So there, correct. Probably. There, yes. are, there are two processes for getting caffeine out of coffee beans or out of tea leaves. One is a chemical stripping mm -hmm. process, and it's stripping out as much caffeine as possible, but not all. Now, the other process is a water stripping process. It's even more, mm, a lot more involved to do the water stripping just because you're, you're not working with the um, almost fierceness and viciousness of the chemicals. 
you're doing it a lot more gently, but it's a lot more complicated. So then that goes into this whole other realm of if you're getting decaf that's been chemically stripped, it's not as expensive as decaf that's been water stripped. However, back to caffeine and my whole issue with that. There are people who have very, very important medical reasons to not have caffeine. Sure. Some of the reasons, just very common that we can think of, is if you have a pacemaker. Let's say you have high blood pressure, or let's say you're a person who suffers anxiety and panic attacks. Caffeine for any of those folks is really, really bad. That's a, not a good thing. So I don't want to sell anything that if I haven't had a chance to talk to someone and give them their lesson on decaf, <laughs> that if they shouldn't be having caffeine, and if they're buying that decaf and they go home and drink it, and they start having heart palpitations, or if they start having a panic attack, well, it's not like they would come back and sue me, but they might come back and complain and say, you know, I was still getting these bad reactions with this tea. Well, if I hadn't had a chance to tell them. Right. If you need zero caffeine, even drinking a little caffeine could set you off. I just don't even have that category. So I've got all the teas with caffeine, and I've got a whole department of teas with zero caffeine. With herbal. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mean to go on about that no. question, no. but I wanted to share, decaf is not caffeine free. A lot of people already know that. I didn't know it until I, I didn't started either. studying this I didn't either. Now, I told you two seconds ago about something called rooibos. Mm -hmm. I want to share this Spell it for him. Rooibos is spelled R-O-O-I-B-O-S. It looks like rooibos, <laughs> but it's pronounced rooibos. So rooibos is an African herb. Neat, neat things about it, but oh my goodness, a couple particular things that are great. First off, it is caffeine-free. That'd be the zero caffeine. It's also chock full of antioxidants. That's a good thing. Oh, of wow. course, black tea and green tea are full of antioxidants, which help your antibodies to help you fight off viruses and um, illnesses. But getting back to the rooibos, zero caffeine, chock full of antioxidants. And here's the part that's the real clincher. It has two natural chemicals in it that are histamine blockers. Histamine blockers means at allergy times, mm -hmm. if you are snippy, if you are runny, if you've got the itchy eyes, sneezing, whatever your mm -hmm. particular mm is, drinking a cup or two of rooibos a day will help combat those allergies. Same as taking a Claritin or an Olegra. Sign me up for the rooibos, please, ma'am. Well, the thing is, we take, we take enough pills that is, mm -hmm. like, oh, we're filling our bodies mm -hmm. with this. And if you could drink just a natural mm -hmm. drink and help yourself in such a grand way. Mm -hmm. So at allergy times, but this is North Carolina, allergy time seems to now be year round. No, it is. It, it is. is. different things at different times. Mm -hmm. cause that. Mm -hmm. Well, with that going on, a lot of people come running in for the rooibos specifically for that reason. I have about nine different flavors of the rooibos. I have a plain one with no flavorings to it. But uh, if people can find a flavored one they love, then they're enjoying it on top of it mm -hmm. really being a big help for them. And you can do it hot or cold as well, yes. Absolutely, and it does not change the chemical health. Do um, you ever add bee pollen? I don't personally, meaning, and I don't sell it here, but that would be a great additive. That or... I noticed somewhere we went yesterday. Black Lantern. Yeah. Chia, mm -hmm. the chia seeds, because mm -hmm. those have a lot of... Nutrients. When do you do that? Yes. I had not thought of that. Mm -hmm. And they swell up too. You could just, dr yeah, mm -hmm. they say at the bottom. Yes. Yes. Now I want to share another fun thing that people can do with tea. You could brew it and have it, have it in your fridge. Oh my goodness. Have you ever had a tea smoothie? <gasps> what? Yes. Especially if you take either vanilla ice cream that. or vanilla frozen yogurt. Oh my. Throw that in your blender. Whatever flavor of tea you have brewed up, put that in your blender. Of course, and then you have basically, you know, what a smoothie is. It's like a shake. Mm -hmm. So then you have something with incredible flavor, lots of antioxidants, depending on whether you use the black tea, the green tea, or any of our herbal teas, maybe no caffeine, but it's a delicious, delicious smoothie. Mm -hmm. so, tea smoothies. Tea smoothies. Or if you wanted a tea float, you remember the old root beer float? Yes. yes. So what you could do is just put your lump of ice cream down in your glass and pour your tea over it. Now, if you pour your tea over it hot, it's going to dissolve it quicker. If you pour your tea over it as cold tea, 
Then you're going to have a tea float. It'd be a flappy dope. Yes, <laughs> it would. That's what we call it. Wendy, that would be cool flappy to dope. make for Sarah's shower and have it in a container already made up. Mm. She's Thank getting you. ready to be a grandma again. That would be so cool. I know. Oh. This has been amazing. I knew none of this except that I can buy it. Like like I said, the hyssop tea. But wow, we, I feel like I've been to tea school. Yes, you have. Mm -hmm. I have. No I kidding. To do before you leave, you've got your little gift bag. I want to put this in your little mm -hmm. gift bag. Mm-hmm. Okay, put that in her Thank you bag. so much. And not be able to do a thing with it. You know what? I actually have one. I'll tell you, I don't remember where I got it, but it's plastic and you put the tea in and then you pop it closed and then you uh, brew it or whatever. And then you squeeze the top to wring out the... May I stop you? Yes, please. May I stop you? I know that it even comes with the mechanism. It does. It, it does. But let me tell you, and this is part of my lecture. If there are folks who don't like bitter tea... And that's all those tannins. Do you know? Don't ring it. If you have soaked this, and there are people like when they'll scoop up the tea bag with their spoon, and then they take that good old string and go rippity rippity. I would do that. I would do that. And get those last couple drops out. Do you know what you just put in there? Tannins. Tannins. You have strangled them out of these leaves. Mm -hmm. And you have put them right there so, in your tea. So, so you Same as that. Yeah. I know they make them. They like do. That. But the people who make them might not understand that. They might not know this background. They're just making these wonderful products. Well, and it's also less messy, and then you just knock it on the side of the trash can to dump it out. And we've also all thought of well, waste, not want. Not. Absolutely. Let's get the last two drops on it. Absolutely. They are bitter as all get out. You problem. haven't made yourself happy. <laughs> not at all. That's awesome so to know that. Do not ring it with the string. And if you don't mind, no. don't squish it out because you are squishing out. No more squishing for me. I'm going to get a t-shirt that says, no more squishing. I've been to T-School. Thank you. That's a good one. Thank good you. One. But that is a thing. And, you know, a lot of people will have done this, especially this string around. That. Yes. I can tell you the number of times I've done it. But have you ever tasted bitter in your tea? Well, I've, I've often wondered, why does, it, why does this taste different than it did yesterday? And probably the day before, you know, yesterday I probably was in a hurry and didn't, didn't do that. But it never registered with me. But it does now. And I think I'm just going to stay away from the little cute bag altogether and just use the because then you don't you don't have the choice to ring it. Right. It's just oh. ring. Mm -hmm. There's no. What an awesome lesson today. I know, and I can't wait to see all the tea she had. Me too. And I loved what you gave us. Like I would have a whole cup of that in the car with ice. Excellent. Yes. Well, you got so, a little. Bag. It was so I good. Show you how I make this. Mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. I do. Okay. And then I sweeten it because I do prefer sweetener. Now, if someone doesn't prefer it or shouldn't have it, don't do it. But brew it hot and then put it in the fridge. And the reason I do it that way is I do like sweetener. So by putting the sugar in when it's hot, it will dissolve. Sure. And honey. We have honey on our farm. Yes. We farm for a living. I don't know if you knew that. So I love agribusiness. And this is agribusiness at its oh finest. Yeah. Oh so... Honey also mm -hmm. would dissolve if you've made it hot mm -hmm. and put it in the fridge. Have you ever tried to put honey in something yes. that's already cold? It yes. Just sticks it sticks to the spoon. Like a lump. Mm -hmm. It just will not dissolve. It's like a gumdrop. Yes. Mm -hmm. Chewing on that. Mm -hmm. So other than that, if you do it when it's hot, the sugar will dissolve, the honey will dissolve. Mm -hmm. And then you chill it. Mm -hmm. The recommended sweetener like sugar, do you use raw sugar? Do you use... Honey, do you use regular white sugar? What do you use? Well, I just use regular white sugar just out of the kitchen. But if I've ever had unsweetened chilled tea, again, honey is not going to dissolve. Sugar is not going to dissolve. Agave is not going to dissolve. Well, I was going to say, I've had the best luck with either agave or the simple syrup, you know, mm -hmm. like the liquid syrup that, I don't know what people put in on pancakes or what all they put it in, but you can buy it in the store. It's just the simple syrup. That will dissolve because it's already thin. Or if you boil on your cooktop one cup water, two cups sugar, that's your own simple syrup. Absolutely. Syrup. It's, it's one to two. Now, we're but we're one to one on the tea. We're one to one on the tea. Correct. One teaspoon, one cup. For the making. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to talk about what you just said, people will also make their own homemade lavender simple syrup. <gasps> 
Oh, oh you, I love lavender. It reminds me of Jesus. Yes. I'm pretty sure in heaven it's going to smell like lavender. Oh, I bet it will. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful smell. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. But if you throw about in one cup of water with, did you say one cup of sugar? One to two. One to two. One to two. two. two cups of sugar. And then throw in about three tablespoons of lavender because lavender is so strong. Uh -huh. Yes. And I saw the lavender buds here. Just throw that in with the water, let that steep, and then soak down. And then you're going to have to um, sift out. Plus, your house smells so oh, good. I ordered lavender just for the viewers here um, that are watching. I ordered lavender online, and it was already ground up. And I have it in a mason jar, so there's no moisture to it. Yeah. And you can put it just a tiny bit, like in the muffins. And it has that smell like heaven in your house. Mm -hmm. And then when you give it to someone, you tell them. This smells like heaven. It's going to smell like heaven. And it's, this is going to, lavender is going to smell in heaven. I'm just yes, telling you. I'm just telling you. This is awesome. I would love, can I have one more shot of that baby's love? Of, that, of, that one? of the tea? Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> I would love that. You want another taste? I want another taste. Mm -hmm. Mary, thank you so much. My viewers are like, oh my gosh, this has been awesome. I did not know that. I'm going to sign off because my hand's going to sleep. Was there anything else you wanted to tell the viewers, Mary? Well, what I will share, and that's just... Cheers to y'all. Cheers, cheers, cheers. To Mary. Oh, and tea making, 101. So self-promotion. Mm -hmm. I have a website. It is all lowercase, carriagehousetea.com. You can buy my teas there. We'll post that too as well, and tag. Mary, this has been amazing. Well, the, everything's amazing here, and you are amazing. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off because, for real, my, my fingers are asleep. Okay, love y'all mean it. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now. That is a great, that was great.